not my Yeah, no, you got it. There's a delay on the other switch that we talked about using. All right. I figure within five years I'll get it figured out. Okay, here we go. First of all, welcome to worship this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you. Thanks for remembering about that hour thing uh, that we did last night. I think we should kind of do that almost every other Sunday. I kind of enjoy the end of the hour. They can, they can take it away Wednesday morning or something. But uh, in case you're wondering who I am, I'm Pastor Glenn Meyer. I'm our new intentional interim pastor here at Holy Cross. And basically, my call is to, yes, help and assist with the daily pastoral needs of the congregation as best I can, but at the same time, also help lead and guide us through what we call the intentional interim process, taking a look at, okay, Lord, what is it you've called the church to do? Because we are part of your church, your people. And what are our strengths? What have we done well? And what are some of our areas of weakness? And what are some of the opportunities and needs, some that maybe have even just come up within the last few years or even months or even weeks. And Lord, what is it you would have us do? And what should be some of our key focuses as we go forward? So what comes out of this is we start with, well, this is what I want, this is what I think we should do. But as we talk to one another, probably the key thing is as we listen to one another, we're going to realize, and you'll have people making comments like this at the end of it, well, you know, I'm, these are some things really important to me. However, what we are looking for right now in the past, as we are kind of focused on some of these key things going forward, here's what we are looking for, and here's what we think God is guiding and leading us to do. Uh, there's a bunch of things going on. And we got the COVID-19. Uh, if you'd be interested, we're looking to see if we can develop a little bit more of a clear, concise, uh, one uh, voice. Seems like we've got a lot of different ideas and things. And uh, previous church I was at, we had a parish nurse that was qualified former nurse and was in touch with some of these things and really helped us. You know, here's what we're doing, here's what we're not doing, and so on. If you're interested in that, talk with me. I want to be contacting confirmation parents. Not just seventh and eighth parents of seventh and eighth graders, but also third through sixth grade. See what we're open to, see what we can do. Some folks have already talked with me about that. We want to move that forward. Uh, and then I need some help trying to figure out how we're going to organize having those cognitive meetings, whatever we'll call them, where we get a chance to meet with one another in a safe way, safe distance, but in a way of saying, okay. What about some of these things? What is it that God is calling us to do? We'll take notes, and eventually there'll be the transition team, the task force, that'll put those notes together, continue to talk about it, and we'll make our report to the congregation. Just a few things that are going to be going on. So in the midst of it all, I welcome your phone call. My phone number is in that insert in the news and notes. You kind of have to look for it. I guess maybe we did that on purpose. I'm not sure. You got to actually read the notes, find where the number is. But please be sure to read the news and notes. There's a lot of news and notes in there. We're going to continue to make some adjustments in our worship as we try to be safe about things. I'll have my mask on when I'm coming in, you know, when I'm going out, when I think I'm kind of in a safe distance, whatever, or when I'm trying to lead worship or lead the singing, help with the singing, you know, I will have my mask off so I can do that. Um, if you tell me later I need to do that from up here, I can do that as well. But that's part of what we're doing in communion, so there's going to be one adjustment we're going to make. The elders and pastoral will commune at the end, but one of the things you're going to do and say it starting from here, instead of the, where the bread, the body of the Lord being here, we're going to have that person here with the mask on, receive the bread, the body of Christ, step to the open space, take the mask down, take the bread, mask back on, come to the person offering the, the wine, the blood of Christ, then step to the side. So we're facing the, the altar, the cross, then drink the, the blood of Christ, the, the wine. It's just a way to keep us from helping protect one another. And somebody says, you know, yeah, and I know there's a difference of opinion. One of the things we're going to be talking about is this. 
love one another. We're going to be wearing the mask, and we are wearing the mask, not so much for our own safety as we are in love and concern and compassion for our weaker, more vulnerable friends and family members around us, the family of God in Christ Jesus. So just to kind of explain some of our thinking and some of our thoughts about that. If there's any questions about it, talk with me. We are remembering, and by the way, I'm so friendly, even if you're going to be telling me something that you think I maybe don't want to hear, you still tell me, and I might go back to the condo later that you got to me and cry later, but uh, I'll hear you and, and, and we'll talk. We are remembering this day, All Saints Day. One of the names of the dearly departed from this last year is my father, Henry Meyer. We just had his funeral back in Nebraska just 12 days ago. As I've served over the years, I'm almost always have had a name on that list that we have shared who was sitting in the congregation just a year ago on All Saints Day. It is a reminder that, yes, our time is also coming. But as we remember those who have gone before us, trusting in Jesus, we remember God's promises and the assurance that in Christ we can face that day unafraid. When our time comes, we too shall be home with our Lord. But in the meantime, we have work to do. So that day that we shall also be with Jesus in paradise, let us, as my Father would say, keep leaning on Jesus. We begin our worship with our opening hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
remembering our baptism, remembering God's promise to be with us as we gather together in his name, to continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this year confession, I diverge of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb.
Christ and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtue and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joy you have prepared for those who love you. All through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading this morning is from Revelation 7, verse 1 to 17. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth or sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation from the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst no any more. The sun shall not, shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The epistle lesson is from 1 John 3, verses 1 to 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, so we are and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like, we shall be like, their, we shall be like, we shall be like Him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord.
Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. When he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In using words of the Nicene Creed, we join together in the confession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the world. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and he buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, in Revelation 7, these words, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. May the Lord bless the contemplation and study of his word. A dear friends in Christ, back in June of 1970, I was just getting ready to start high school, and Stevie Wonder came out with a hit single, Signed, Sealed, Delivered, I'm Yours. And don't worry, I'm not going to try to sing any of that for you. But I wasn't into any particular type of music. I wasn't spending time or money on fancy music systems, uh, whatever it was, the LPs and everything else it was at the time, turntable and all that stuff. I attended the school with great Christian teachers, had some great role models, and I was just trying to survive and trying to sort out God's plan and purpose for me going forward. I reviewed the words of Stevie Wonder's song, however, and found some interesting comparisons to our topic this day, especially as we think of our relationship with God. The essence of the song is basically this, and I sure wouldn't remember this. I just remember the sign sealed, delivered on yours. I don't remember anything else about the song. But apparently it's, here comes this bum who is wondering if he has stayed too long. He has treated his girl shamefully and done some foolish thing. Like that time I went and said goodbye. He goes on to say, I've done a lot of foolish things. I could be a broken man, but here I am. You've got my future in your hand. Here I am, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. In hearing the words, I'm thinking the girl should answer in the words of an old Elvis, Elvis Presley song, Return to Sender. <laughs> and then there's some debate as no such address, no such phone. I, I'm not exactly sure how it goes on, but think of our relationship with our God and Savior. We've done a lot of foolish things. When I say we, I'm including me as well. We've done some foolish things. God would have the right to treat us all in the words of the Elvis song. I write, I'm sorry, but my letter keeps coming back. What does God do instead? I want to use this. There wasn't really a good place for it. I wanted to use this as an opportunity also, though, to share a little bit and make an observation about something that I've heard, stories and experiences I've heard on uh, the short time I've already been here. There's been some different things in our history that uh, uh, we didn't shine so well, okay, in those times. Um, we haven't always uh, thought of others more than our own personal concern. We there are times we haven't handled differences of opinion very well. Here's our brother, our sister in Christ, and instead of really listening and caring for one another, we said, we said well, this is I, what I want then, so forth. So I think kind of before we get started, this is something you really need to hear, and I don't really know a good place to say it, so here it is. And I may not even like hearing it, but here it is, okay? God loves you so very, very much. One of the things that John goes on to write about in this epistle lesson that we read is because he loves us, we love because he first loved us. We are the children of God, so loved by God. Dear people of God, so love one another. You might have noticed when I was talking about the mass and stuff, and yes, I know, there's so good. I think there's this political, it's this and that, and you may be right, you may be not. I may share your opinion, I may not. But did you notice that? I said that, look, but maybe we don't do it so much for ourselves, but maybe it's in love and concern for our weaker, for our more vulnerable brother or sister in Christ who's also here with us to stay or wherever we might be. See what I'm getting at is we don't just think of ourselves. 
for a thing. And why do we do that? Because God loves us. I want you to know your pastor loves you. There may be times and places where we look at things and I can't believe you're rooting for that team. And that might come up in your conversation with me. Really? Nebraska? No. Uh, <laughs> my only defense is I grew up there. It's, it's, in the, it's in the dirt. It's in the water. I, I can't help it. Plus, who else are we going to root for out there? Okay. But, or it might even be something in terms of politics or something like that. I just can't. Do it. And there may be times that I just don't know if I really like you. But in Christ Jesus, you are loved. And as the love, not only by your God, but by your passion, by your fellow Christians, by your family in Christ, that's part of our identity in the gospel reading that we heard just a little bit earlier. All those things that God talks about that we're going to receive as the people of God are not because we're going to do all these things and we're going to be merciful, therefore we'll be this and no. All those things that we're doing is part of who we already are in Christ Jesus. It's the called and redeemed children of God in Christ Jesus. Our security, as Pastor Mink talked about last Sunday, our security is in Christ and what He has done. He has called us by name and baptism. We are precious to Him. We're, I haven't quite figured out, but as children will come forward maybe later during communion as we go forward on Sundays, we're going to figure out a way maintaining social distance to still do a blessing for the children as well because we want them to also know they are loved by God and so precious to the Lord. And we need to reflect that to one another. Even in those times when, boy, I don't know if I really like you, but I do love you because you're my brother, my sister in Christ. Okay, what do we need to work out here? What do we need to do here? What does God do instead? He doesn't turn us away. He seals the servants of our God. That's the title on our forehead. He calls us by name in baptism, where we receive the sign of the Holy Cross. Some of, many of our baptism practices, we have for the little child or the adult. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ who crucified. When we do our greetings and things later, okay, you can't shake hands. We've been kind of doing the elbow thing, but I decided some call for Pakistani greeting. I don't know if that's true or not, but how about a greeting of the heart? Just kind of putting our hand over our heart and, and a greeting of the heart. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. It's so good to see you. If we like it, great. If we don't, we can meet for it, okay? But uh, that's who we are. Jesus, the Christ, our Savior, who is the Lamb in the midst of the throne, who is our Good Shepherd, assures us, you are precious to me. I died for you. I rose again for you. We have been forgiven so much. Remember the story of the unmerciful servant? We've been forgiven so much. We can extend that same forgiveness and grace and mercy and patience with others. Even when life will not always be easy, there may even be terrible persecution that the Christian may endure during their lifetime. I think a lot of us always thought, well, that may happen someday to our descendants, whatever, but we sure won't see that in our day. I think more and more people realize we can't be so confident of that. There's a lot of things that have come about, and things even in the last few years that when I was starting out as a pastor, we would have never dreamed. Forty years ago, we never would have dreamed that this would be questioned, that this aspect, this basic uh, thing of, Christian, of our Christian faith, our trust in God's word, would be questioned or seen as unloving. These are the ones coming out of the Great Tribulation. God promises His people, despite the persecution, Despite the troubles and trials, Christians will endure. His church will remain on earth until the last day, the judgment day. As long as we live on earth, he assures us the saints are blessed under the care of the Good Shepherd, our Lord and Savior. And even though 
Some had and will continue to face terrible trials because of their faith and trust in Jesus, because they refuse to kneel to the idols of the day. God promises that nothing will separate us from the love of God. We have his promise and assurance that we will dwell in the house of the Lord, our good shepherd, forever. In the midst of the problems of the past, in the midst of the gloom that seems to be everywhere, it's supposed to deal with COVID-19 really around, all around the world. One might look to the future for the hope of better things to come. In some ways that may be true. But in other ways, we are reminded there's still going to be times of persecution, times of trouble. God's word is very clear on that, even until the last day comes. Even in Stevie Wonder's song, he reflects the fact that our real life is meaningless if it is only centered in the things of the world. He, he wrote, a lot of things in this old world, they mean nothing. So where is our hope for today and tomorrow? Where do we rest secure this day and tomorrow? Where can we help someone else who is dear to us, someone else who comes within our, our umbrella of influence? Where can we point them? We're going to say the words of one thing. Our hope is based on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Our hope is centered in Jesus and the promises of God's word, where we are assured that God's people of faith, the saints, are signed, are sealed, and will be delivered by Christ Jesus. So where do we children of God turn in faith in Christ Jesus? Our only Savior from sin? Where do we turn for hope and encouragement and strength to remain faithful to the faith put in us by the Holy Spirit in baptism? We remember our baptism. We come to be fed by our Lord the sword and sacrament. He knew the journey would be tough. And so he provides food for the journey. He provides the fellowship of fellow believers. I think of some of the folks and Christians over the years. who sometimes were kind of put into seclusion or whatever because they were Christian, because they refused to knuckle down under you know, whatever the persecution, the government, whatever it was at the time. And one of the things they talked about when they had a chance to ever share it was one of the things they missed most of all was the community of believers. The encouragement that we read about in Hebrews, but do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is Madison, but encourage one another. How? Just with your presence. Well, it's tough with uh, COVID-19, and, so, and some of our folks watching from home, you know, later today, you know, it's tough. What do we do, and, and, and how do we go about this? And yet, in whatever way we can, to encourage one another. That's also one of the ways God provides for us. He knew it would be tough at times. But he assures us, I am with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Come, be strengthened. Come, be encouraged. Come, be assured of the forgiveness of sins that is yours in Christ Jesus. By God, by Calvary's cross, delivered to us at the baptismal font in the Lord's altar. God has signed and sealed us in this grave. In that grace, we are ready to now stand in faithful assurance alongside the saints triumphant. And one day we will be delivered to join them in praising God from whom all blessings flow. That is the promise, the assurance that is ours in Christ. Yeah, it was tough 12 days ago, burying my father. But it's been a long goodbye because of the journey of Alzheimer's. But I know I'm going to see him again. Just like I'm going to see my Uncle Ar, my grandparents, my cousin Larry, and the hundreds of folks that had the privilege of being there at their funerals and all. And sometimes it even wouldn't have with them when the angels called. When the Lord called them, they went home to heaven. I'm going to see him again. That's the promise that is ours in Christ. So we look at one another. And as we go through and as we go, okay, Lord, what are you calling us to do as we're going forward? Let's remember to look at one another. First of all, remembering we are loved. And then remembering that person we're dealing with 
that person we're tempted to talk about instead of talk with. Let's remember that also. Is it they also, he also, she also was a person loved so dear by God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may that peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to all eternity. We stand and join in singing the offertory creation of the heart.
Almighty and eternal God, we remember before you the saints and martyrs of every generation who trusted in you in the face of terror and threat. Grant that when facing persecution and trial in our own day, we may be steadfast in faith. Deliver those whom you have washed from baptism, granting the new life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty and eternal God, you established the church and granted her your aid and protection through these many years. Continue to pour out upon us your spirit and grace, that we may accomplish your bidding and proclaim your saving name to every corner of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we beg your grace that our lives may be ordered by your command. And we ask you to bless those who govern us in your name. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, the legislature, and all local officials, that pursuing the path of justice, they may act with humility and honor for the good of all people. Give wisdom to all who vote this week. Bless its result that our nation may elect our leaders peacefully and orderly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we rejoice that you have rescued us from the power of death and raised us in Christ to dwell with him in everlasting life. Give to those who grieve the comfort of the promise of the resurrection of the dead and eternal life, and bestow your peace upon the dying, that they may fall asleep here and awake in your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you have made us your children, and you continue to guard us as your own possession. According to your will, give healing to the sick, calm to the troubled in mind, and patience to those facing sorrow and struggle. Give health and peace to our nation. Hear us especially on behalf of those who name before you who are struggling with health concerns. We ask you, Lord, to be with Sandy Hauser, that you give her also your, your comfort and healing strength. We ask you again to be with uh, the, home, the homebound and the many others who name before you in our hearts. Grant them, O Lord, healing and strength according to your holy and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty and eternal God, show forth your kindness to the poor and your compassion to those who suffer injustice. Deliver us from the scourge of racism and prejudice and help us to acknowledge our common life from your creative power and our common redemption in Christ our Savior. Help us remember, Lord, in our dealings with one another, in our dealings with those around us in the world. Your love, your mercy, your grace and forgiveness is offered to all and received in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Mighty and eternal God, we are unworthy of all your blessings and do not deserve the mercies new every morning of our earthly lives. Give us the will and desire to care responsibly for all that you have entrusted to us and to be generous with those in need and for the support of your church and the work of your kingdom, that all may be done to your glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, your Son has set his table among us in the presence of our enemies, giving us a foretaste of the eternal peace to come. Prepare us in heart and mind to come to the sacrament, receive the blessing of his body and blood for our benefit. Deliver us from divisions that prevent our communion together, and bring us soon to the day when we will be fully united in doctrine and life to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Your Lord. Lord, to that end, we continue to remember our fellow Christians and our fellow congregations around this land and around the world. We ask you this day, especially to be with Redeemer Lutheran Church of Auburn, New York. Bless this congregation, bless their pastor, bless the work and ministry they are doing, and bless them as they also uh, just as we all do, continually ask, Lord, what is it you would have us do? Lord, what is the purpose and plan that you have for us in this day, in this age? Lord, we pray that you be with those who have suffered loss. We ask you especially to be with the family of Rana Kanoka, uh, for whom, uh, whom you received home to yourself yeah, in this past days. We ask you, Lord, to be with those who need your comfort, need your strength. Uh, keep them, Lord, in your grace. Almighty and eternal God, bring us to that day when every tear shall be wiped from our eyes and we shall hunger and thirst no more. Knowing you now by faith, we yearn for the day when we shall know you face to face. Until the dawn of that eternal day, keep us in your faith, keep us in your grace, 
Keep us ever aware that we can keep leaning on you and our faith and trust in you will not be disappointed. You care for us. You love us. All through our good shepherd and Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear people of God, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints gathered into one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with Donna and Jen and Raymond and Wilma and Ernest and Al and Ronald and Ted, Kathleen and Henry and Sherry and Blanche and Jack and Carolyn and Joanne and Suzanne, and with all the many others we name and remember in our hearts who have gone before us trusting in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. after supper and when he had supped and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this too is often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the lord be with you always <laughs>
And now, may this true body and blood of our crucified and risen Savior strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Go forward in God's power, His grace, and His love and forgiveness. Amen. foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Again, dear people of God, the Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, look upon you with his favor, and give you peace.
worship with you this day, sorry, Lord. But I do want to be sure to encourage you to, if you can, keep the place in your pew or whatever. We'll be having Bible class here in just a few minutes as well. We'll get a chance to greet, remember, safely. But uh, then you're welcome to come back and here for Bible class as well. Blessing.